great is thy faithfulness in all times and in all things. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see.
am Ed C. Jones III, Senior Pastor here at Trinity United Methodist Church. I'm grateful uh, that you're worshiping with us this morning. Uh, please like, share, and invite others to uh, worship with us. If you are looking at this on Facebook or YouTube, please subscribe or uh, follow our page to connect. Uh, it's it's a, a pleasure to connect with you this morning. If, if this is your first time joining us, I want to extend a large welcome to you. We know that you could have been at a whole bunch of places, but you chose to worship with us. Trinity, show some love to our guests by typing welcome in the chat. Uh, please take a moment, fill out the connection card using uh, the, the, the button that pops up on in the chat. Uh, we are so grateful that you have uh, come to this place and we, de we desire to ensure that we do our best to connect with you in every possible way that's possible. Uh, we want to continue to lift those who are hurting in our family. Uh, this is a, a, a season that we don't want anybody to, to go alone. It is so important for, for those who, who desire to connect with the church to, uh, to, to be put on our sick and shut-in list. And uh, this is, whatever is going on in that season that you may be passing through, I want to encourage you to, to know that God is with you. He's not uh, leaving you behind, but he's connecting with you in a real and practical way. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for giving us an opportunity to gather here. Allow your Holy Spirit to, to be with us. Father, we give you praise because uh, we know who you are. Uh, you are the one who was, who is, and who is still yet to come. Right now, God, we, we thank you. God, we ask that you can just continue to uh, place a hedge of protection around our, our homes, our, our communities, our, our churches, our hospitals, our, our cities, Father. Father, we just pray your, your hand of protection. God, you have been so good to us. You have been so good to us that we desire to give you all the praise. Oh, oh, Father, you saw fit to shower us with your grace and mercy. Even when we turned our back against you, you were so forgiven. Father, we ask for those who are hurting. Father, we ask that you, you heal them in the name of Jesus. Father, for those who, who are lonely, Father, we ask that you comfort them and let them know that they are not alone. We come before you right now on uh, behalf of those who are sick. Father, we pray for their healing, their restoration, their endurance, their bodies, their oxygen, their pain, their grief. Father, may you continue to provide for them in the best way that they can move toward your purpose, your plans, your possibility for their life. Father, we pray for our medical professionals. Father, we pray for them. We pray for our educators, Lord. Uh, we pray for those who are, are, are serving in, in our community so that we can, can stay afloat, God. We ask that you place a hedge of protection uh, around them. God, we ask you if you can continue to move toward these people uh, with your peace and your power. God, we lift this prayer in the name that's above all names. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. How many of y'all know that you don't have to worry about anything that's going on right now because you're safe in his arms? everything I need and 
he helps me to rest in the meadow's grass and he leads me beside the quiet stream he restored my failing hand and he helps me to do what honors him the most and that's why I like that. Biblical historians paint a totally different picture. David wrote the 23rd Psalm when he was in one of the most stressful moments of his life. Psalm 23 was written when one of David's sons, Absalom, had plotted and started a hostile takeover against David, gathering a, a rebel army in advancing David advancing toward David in Jerusalem, which forced David out of Jerusalem to flee. Imagine how David felt when his son seized the capital city while David was running for his life. Overcome with grief, overcome with depression, overcome with hurt. The, the, the David's son's action did something deep, and now David finds himself hiding in some uh, remote uh, 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 village, uh, completely uncertain on how everything is going to end, and that's when he had the time to reflect on his 
hurt his heart. And that's the background for the 23rd Psalm. The text flows from a place where emotions, fears, and anxiety were sweeping up David. The shepherd king reflected on his situation like a sheep who was weighed down with circumstances, weighed down with situation, and weighed down with setbacks. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Today we're focusing on the phrase, he leads me beside still waters. See, David reminded himself, he leads me. I don't know about you, but when you find yourself the opposite side of resting on vacation in green pastures, Filled with fear, anxiety, depression, remorse, anger, frustration, frustration. I don't know if you ever been at that place when you needed the Lord to lead you. Your, your back was against the wall. You, you had no one to turn to. You were at the end of yourself. You will witness a, a, whole, a, a brand new surge of the Delta variant. Schools were attempting to open. Uh, hospitals were, were closed because the, they, they had no more room. Do you have in-person worship or do you have virtual worship? I need the Lord to lead me. David writes this verse to remind himself, even in the midst of all the stuff that he was facing, how a shepherd leads his flock. And then he associates how the Lord was leading him in that moment. Someone type in the chat, he leads. Last week, Pastor Hilda touched on a verse uh, he makes us lie down in green pastures. Remember, sheep will not lie down if they are thirsty, hungry, or fearful. So the shepherd would have to lead from one spot to another to, to find the, bless, the best place for the sheep to have food, water, and safety. The, 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 the Lord leads us just as a shepherd leads a flock of sheep. Uh, uh, sheep don't know where the, what the shepherd sees, but we trust the, the shepherd enough to follow him. Sheep trust the shepherd uh, because uh, it, we trust that the shepherd has our best interests. It's the role of the shepherd to find the location for the sheep to thrive. So when David writes, he leads me. David understood the Lord would lead him from that barren place that he was smack dab in the middle of to a place that he'd never been before to receive provision beyond his wildest imagination. The sheep had to trust the shepherd because they understood that the shepherd would lead sheep to places and spaces that they'd never been before. Even places and spaces they did not plan on, they never heard of. The, 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 the shepherd was continuously leading, and he was leading with his voice. He was leading with his voice. In the biblical context of ancient Palestine, grazing land was not abundant. Shepherds would not have would, would have to guide their flocks to places enough to, to to so that the sheep could have grass. The the shepherd needed to know where to go, the best route, uh, 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 the pace that they should take. They, they would uh, would it be dry? Would it be rugged terrain? They needed to figure all these things. It was not easy being a shepherd. The shepherd's voice was his primary tool to lead the sheep. Now see, often uh, the many uh, flocks uh, and shepherds would end up at the same watering hole and the sheep would get all mixed up. The, the shepherds did not worry about the sheep getting mixed up because when it was time to go, each shepherd used their distinctive voice and the shepherd's sheep rose up 
and, and, and separated themselves from the crowd and followed the shepherd's voice. Uh, the shepherd, uh, uh, the shepherd uh, used his voice, and the sheep knew whom they belonged to because they heard the shepherd's voice. The, the sheep uh, uh, had a good understanding of the shepherd's voice, and it was only it was the only one that they would follow. All the other shepherds could say something, but they would only follow their shepherd. In, in the Gospel of John, uh, the, 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 the third verse, it says, the sheep listen to his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he puts all of his own sheep outside, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep will follow him because they know his voice. Quick five ways to hear the shepherd's voice. Uh, type these in the chat as we go along. Hearing the shepherd's voice through God's word. Hearing the shepherd through God's word. Hearing the shepherd through reflecting and memorizing God's word. Uh, not, not hearing uh, the word in your head, but, you know, hearing the word in your heart. Pay attention to what the word is making you feel. Well, pay attention to what you're sensing, what you're thinking, what you're understanding, what comes to your remembrance when you encounter the word. Uh, the third one, hearing the shepherd through other people. The Lord speaks to open vessels of his word. The Lord is speaking to you through someone that his word resides in is in, and encourage you to operate at a higher level. The, the next one is hearing the word through circumstances. During COVID, the Lord is speaking to us. Hearing the shepherd through dreams and visions is the last one. Those are quick five ways to, to discern. If you're interested in a deeper dive into hearing the shepherd's voice, click the link below. It's a, a special lesson on Right Now Media uh, by Dallas Willard. Just click the link below to, 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 to view a, a powerful lesson. If you're not signed up, just sign up on the link below that you can get access to all these powerful biblical lessons. Uh, I want to make sure we get to this point. Shepherds understand that terrains will change. They will go from barren and, and they'll go to plentiful. And, 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 and when they get barren, there is a need to go to a space and place that they can nourish the sheep. The sheep didn't want to move because they, they thought that that current location was as good as it got, and, and they were hunkered down there. Some of us can testify when we get stuck in a mindset, get stuck in a behavior, get stuck in our thinking about what the Lord did for us to get us to this particular place. And we believe it is as good as it gets. But we're putting a ceiling on what God can do. We get stuck, we get complacent, but the shepherd knows if we stay here, this space, this place will not be able to sustain us in the next season. So the shepherd sees what's coming ahead and the shepherd leads the sheep. Lead, see, the shepherd understands that sheep need water continuously. A sheep is 70% water. It needs water to maintain, to function, and without water, sheep become weak, impoverished, and sickly. When sheep get to this space, they will drink from anything, contaminated water with animal waste and parasites. They don't care. But much like a sheep who needs refreshed water to, to survive, Humanity needs to be refreshed by the Spirit. When we operate without the Spirit, we become weak. We become impoverished and we become sickly. When we 
function without the spirit, we're subject to drink from contaminated sources filled with waste and parasites. That limits our purpose, that limits our potential, that limits our possibility. You can sense folk in sheep that are in that condition because they want to tell Jesus where to go. They, they tell Jesus what Jesus needs to do. Uh, they, 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 don't, they don't want to be led by Jesus, they want to lead Jesus. They resist following him, instead they want Jesus to follow me, to follow them. Uh, church, we must follow the Lord. Somebody t type in the chat, we must follow the Lord. The text says he goes ahead of them and the sheep follow him. He leads, we follow. He provides, we follow. He guides, we follow. He heals, we follow. We get it all mixed up and we attempt to take Jesus to spaces and places when in all actuality, Jesus desires to take us completely somewhere beyond our wildest dreams. Church, the Lord is taking us somewhere. We must acknowledge we have never been this way before. Where is the Lord attempting to take you? Where is the Lord prompting you to go? Have you been resistant? He leads me beside still waters. For centuries, uh, shepherds in the Middle East, if they needed water there uh, 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 to, for their sheep, uh, they, they, they knew they, they couldn't go to fast-flowing streams because uh, uh, they, they, that those uh, streams would, uh, could, 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 could take their, uh, uh, their sheep away. And so they began putting rocks uh, or, or, or sod in, in, in on the edges of the uh, stream to, to make a little dam, to, to create a little pool uh, that's along the edge of the stream if... if, if, if if David was in that space, and I believe David understood the practice, and he spoke of God leading him to still waters. The, the water may have been turbulent, but the shepherd can, can still the water. Uh, and indeed, the Hebrew translated still waters uh, uh, could be understood as stilled waters. Rough waters that have been quieted. Uh, the, the Lord, our shepherd, is who can quiet the turbulence of life. It's not the first time. Remember when Jesus was with his disciples in the boat during a storm of the Sea of Galilee, he commanded the waves, peace be still. And at that moment, the scripture says, the wind ceased and there was a complete calm, stilled water. Peace be still. I don't know about you, but I look forward from hearing the good shepherd uh, lead me to some stilled water, to make cancer still, to, to make dementia still, to make depression still, to make heartaches still, to make my aches and pains still, to, to make confusion still, to make gossip still, to make virus still, to make violence still, to make voter suppression still, to make racism still. He leads us by side, beside stilled waters. I, I thought that was going to be the end, but, but something uh, uh, took a turn, and, and, and the text says, uh, you can miss it. He says, he leads me beside still water. Not to still water, beside still. Why did he lead him beside and not to? Have you thought about if you were heading in the right direction, but you was actually going in the wrong direction, and, and, and when you 
were going in the wrong direction, somehow, some way, you found yourself where you needed to be because uh, the Lord was guiding you. You just didn't know. That's why we need to, to, to listen to the shepherd's voice leading us where we don't know where we're going. The text says, lead beside still waters. The shepherd knows something about the sheep that the sheep don't know about themselves. Uh, see, the sheep uh, think that they need to run to some, 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 some water that they can see, but the shepherd knows that the majority of the hydration of a sheep does not come from uh, water that's in a uh, stilled environment. It comes from dew found on vegetation that sheep uh, eat early in the morning. So uh, this morning, I pray someone is hearing the shepherd's voice. Today, I pray that you are sensing that God is telling you it's time for you to turn your ears from all that confusion to listen to what the shepherd is telling you so that you can advance to where God desires for you to go. The scripture says, Jesus stood and said in a loud voice, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. I believe the Lord is encouraging all of us to drink. If you have never had the opportunity to drink from the fountain of life, Jesus Christ, I want to encourage you. You will see a button that pops up. I want to encourage you to press that button. It's, it's there to connect you with the body of Christ who desire to follow Jesus. It's the place where we want to encourage you to make sure that you make a choice, not to, to be led to, to all these other places and spaces, but allow the Lord to connect with you in a place where you can grow and follow I want to encourage you, brothers and sisters, to know that he leads us to side still waters and he has provided for us. I want to encourage you to make sure you invite someone to participate with us next week as we continue this series. It's powerful. It's changing my life. It's changing my thoughts. I want to encourage you to make sure that you invite people next week to partake in the service. At this time, we have a special moment where we want to invite those who made those that decision to, 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 to join the church. You'll see a button that pops up there, join the church. We want to make sure that we connect with you so that uh, you can uh, meet some of us. We'll gather in this place called the Fellowship Hall. It's a Zoom room that basically when you hit the button, it, it ushers you into a room and just we have some fellowship. We look forward to seeing you there. Uh, thank you for being with us. Uh, make sure that you, uh, if you want to sign up for the Right Now Media or any of those things, please hit the links below. Uh, receive this benediction. May God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit rest and rule with you forevermore in Jesus' name. Amen.